All right, all right. Like I said, we're concluding our series on the Holy Spirit today, and we've had some kind of questions like why a series on the Holy Spirit, why a series is five weeks on the Holy Spirit, and I think that that can be best answered uh, by the Word of God and what was going on in Acts chapter 19, because I believe what was going on in Acts chapter 19 is actually happening in our day and time as well. And here's what it says, Acts 19 verse 1 and 2. It says, when Apollos was ministering in Corinth, Paul traveled on three the regions of Turkey until he arrived in Ephesus where he found a group of 12 followers of Jesus. And so Apollos found these followers of Jesus and the first thing he asked them, the first thing that came to his brain, the first thing out of his mouth was, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? No, they replied, we've not even heard of the Holy Spirit. And when I read that, I said, I know that that's true. For many people in our society, in America, even in our church, and I don't want you to be ignorant Uh, to who the Holy Spirit is and to the person of the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to be kept in the dark about the things of the Holy Spirit. And so over the last five weeks, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And I don't want you to just have some knowledge or some information about the Spirit. I want you to gain a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I want you to keep in step with the Spirit. I want the Spirit to be able to lead you and to guide you and to light you up and illuminate you to all the things that God has for you because He has destined you for great things. Amen. He says, I've formed you in your mother's womb. I've knit you together in my inmost being. In other words, God has designed you on the inside for some special, unique, super natural, out-of-this-world gifts, man. And I want you to just come into not just the knowledge, but I want you to encounter all the things that God has for you. And I know this without a shadow of a doubt. You're not going to be able to embrace all that God has for you if you are not full or filled with the Holy Spirit. And so week one, we talked about who the Holy Spirit was. It kind of was an introductory uh, message. And if you've missed any of these messages, they're all available online at rescuehousechurch.org. Go on and watch the ones that you missed because they really do build on one another. And week one was foundational. Who is the Holy Spirit? And we recognize that the Holy Spirit is not an it or a thing. He is actually my helper. He's my friend. And most importantly, He is my God. Amen. And I want a relationship not just with two-thirds of God. I don't want to have a relationship with just the Father and just the Son, Jesus. I want to have a relationship with the whole Trinity, three out of three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is just as much God as Jesus and God the Father. And so week one, we talked about how He's not an it or a thing, that He really is God and that He's a person um, and that, that lives inside of us. In week two, we talked about how to be powered by the Spirit, that the Spirit is who gives us power to have hope when we're weak and how to proclaim Christ boldly. I want you to know that I'm not capable to stand up here without the Spirit and do what I do and say what I say. It's the, the Spirit that is powering me to proclaim Christ boldly and to live righteously. The Holy Spirit does that. Week three, we talked about being gifted. Turn to your neighbor, say, you're gifted. We learned that actually we are a charismatic church. Hello, people, right? And some of you, that freaks you out, and I'm not talking about that means we do weird things and like, you know, do cartwheels down the aisles and, you know, uh, wear a lot of makeup, okay? Like, that's not, that's not what charismatic means. It actually means that just simply you're gifted, that you're, you're grace gifted by the Spirit of God. And uh, I hope that you took that spiritual assessment. If you're not, that's online as well. You can find out what your top gifts are. I really believe it points you in the right direction of those spiritual gifts. And we learned that we got to discover those gifts. We've got to develop those gifts. And we got to demonstrate those gifts Uh, that the Spirit of God has given us. Last week we heard from my really good friend Dan Leanne. I know it was a video, but did you enjoy that message, how the Word of God is living and active, even though it was filmed on video? And uh, I believe that Word was meant for our church as well. And so he talked about how to be 
best friends with the Holy Spirit and practically how to prioritize and be aware and keep in step with the Spirit. And today, to conclude our series on the Holy Spirit, uh, my assignment is to teach us, and it's going to be a little bit foundational. I can't go just so deep. I don't want to leave anybody behind today, but I want to speak an important message on how to be filled with the Spirit of God. And my goal today, I've just been praying it all week, is not to entertain you, but to equip you in the things of God and in the ways of God and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Here's what Ephesians 4.18 says. It says, do not get drunk on wine, hello somebody, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be full of the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Okay? And I just believe that you cannot live your maximum potential life without being full of the Spirit of God. And listen to me, we're all on a journey with Jesus in this church, right? And and, and a lot of us are different places and in different journey, uh, journey points within that journey. And I want you to know that's okay. That's okay. But, but God wants for us more than anything is to continue taking next steps on that journey. And I just want to teach you about some of those steps today to help move you in a direction into a place and a space where you can be full of the Spirit of God on a daily basis. And it's not like we come in here on a Sunday morning and it just we just kind of like get full of the Spirit here and then we go out into the world and we get drained and then we come back in here and we get full again and then we get drained. No, I'm talking about being filled with the Spirit step by step daily Every single hour, every single minute, we're walking in step with the Spirit, and it is possible. And when you do it, when you live like that, there's a power that's available to you that is unexplainable, it's supernatural, and it just is amazing. And I'm not playing games with you today. I'm not just up here saying this stuff because I'm a preacher. Like I'm telling you this because I'm experiencing that. Oftentimes in the Word of God, the the, the Holy Spirit is described sometimes as a flame. And I'll tell people, man, you can either be full of your flesh or you can be full of the flame, but you cannot be full of both at the same time. And so I don't know about you, but I don't want to be full of my flesh and my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. And I want to be full of the Spirit. If you agree, say amen. And so I want to let you know today that there are actually, some of the stuff I'm going to teach today is going to be new to you. And that's okay, because that's us growing together. I want you to know that there are actually three baptisms that are available to us as believers in our journey with Jesus. I want you to take some notes today, all right? Now, baptism doesn't just simply mean dunked in water. That's not what that means. Baptism, the word baptism actually means this, to be immersed in. In. And so you can be baptized into a lot of things, okay? Water baptism is one. We'll talk about that. But baptism actually just means to be immersed, to be dunked, to be uh, submerged, right? And there are actually three of those, three baptisms, three immersions that are available to you. Number one, write this down, is the baptism into the body of Christ, okay? Beside this one, I just want you to write in all capital letters, salvation, Okay, salvation. Now, uh, when we get saved, uh, it's a salvation experience. It's not about religion. It's not about the day that you decide to go to church. Salvation is an immersion not only into Christ, but into the family of Christ and into the family of God and His church. And I'm not just talking about rescue. I'm talking about the big C church, the family of God. And when you place your faith in Him, you are immersed in into Christ, and you are immersed into the body of Christ. Christianity is about immersion into Jesus and His church. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says this, but we have all been baptized into one body, that's oftentimes what Jesus would refer to as the church, as the body, by one spirit. So when you got saved, it's not like, oh yeah, great, I escaped hell and now I get a little bit of heaven and I'm kind of into Jesus and I kind of do my Jesus thing, but, and I go to church every now and then, you know, once uh, a couple in a blue moon, right? But, you know, I kind of live my own way and do my own thing. That is not immersion into Christ. That is not salvation. Galatians 2 or 3, 26 and 27 says it like this. So in Christ Jesus, You are all children of God through faith. For all who were baptized or immersed into Christ have clothed yourselves 
with Christ. In other words, when you place your faith in Christ, you get a new set of clothes. Hello, right? Like you get to put something on. And when celebrities walk the red carpet, what's the first thing that reporters ask them? Hey, who are you wearing, right? Who are you wearing? I want to ask you today, for those of you who have been saved, sanctified, uh, put on the righteousness of God, who are you wearing? What set of clothes are you wearing when you go to your workplace, when you go to your school, when you head into the world? Because I'm here to tell you today, you can't be a follower of Jesus and wear two wardrobes. You can't do it. Like, you can't come to church on Sunday morning and put on your church clothes and get your praise on, and then that night I'm going to put my club clothes on and I'm going to get my twerk on, right? Like, I mean, we're not, that's not, that's putting on two wardrobes. And God has not called us to wear, to, He gave us new clothes. You can't have on in your car, you know, K-Love or my Hillsong playlist, and then the next minute I'm going to listen to blankety blank, blank, blankety blank, blank, you know? And you're like, man, pastor, that's judgmental. No, it's not. I didn't tell you you were going to hell for doing that stuff. I'm just telling you, if you want to be filled with the Spirit of God, you've got to continue. What you put in is what comes out. And I'm telling you, if you want to be filled with the Spirit, you put on the clothes of Christ, you put on His robes of righteousness, and you learn to walk in a power that is not available to you. I'm telling you, church, come on. I want to be filled with the Spirit. And if I want to be filled with the Spirit, I can't wear two wardrobes. And if you'll learn to just walk in what Christ has you has for you to wear, I'm telling you, every giant, every situation, every circumstance by the power of the Holy Spirit has to fall at your feet. Not because of you, but because you have Jesus and because you have the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, salvation, being immersed into Christ, being baptized into Christ and His church is an all-in attitude and mentality. So I'm going all in with God, immersed into His Son, immersed into the body of believers. Check out this encounter that Jesus had with His disciples after He had risen from the dead. And so what happened was Jesus died on the cross, He was buried, and then He rose again. And a lot of people think, oh, well, He just went right to heaven. No, He actually hung out for about 40 days or so, and He just began to, like, pop through doors and just, like, you know, (laughs) appear to people. I mean, the Bible's kind of funny. I I don't know. I'll read this to you. I want to read this encounter to you, but this this encounter, this same encounter is found in three different places in Scripture, and we're going to look at all three of them because I want to point out some details to you. So i got to teach you a little bit bit today to grow you, so I need you to hang with me. Don't fall asleep. Lean in uh, to this word. But this is uh, a moment after Jesus had risen from the grave, and he's appearing to his disciples for uh, the first time. Check it out. John 20, 19 through 22. It says, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. But did you catch that detail? The door was locked. Yeah, Jesus, I just picture him just like sliding through the door. Yo, what's up? Peace be with you. And just freaking them out, you know. The Bible's kind of funny. you got to look at it that way sometimes. And so Jesus is just like walking through locked doors. He comes in. He says, peace be with you. Verse 20, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed that they saw the Lord. In other words, they believed this is the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And at that moment, many many scholars, I'm not a scholar, but I believe with the scholars, that this was the place where the disciples were actually saved. Now, when they, Jesus turned water into wine, it said they believed. But remember, Jesus had not died for the forgiveness of sins yet. And so this was the moment after he had died that I believe that his, the, the disciples' sins were actually forgiven as they were operating under the old covenant. And so this was the moment where Jesus gave them the Holy Spirit. But I want you to know there's a difference in having the Holy Spirit and being clothed in power and full of the Holy Spirit. The moment you place your faith in Jesus is the moment that the Holy Spirit, uh, you receive that and you gain access to the Spirit and He leads and He guides. But that's a lot different than being immersed into the Spirit or being full of the Spirit and being filled uh, with the Spirit. 
So let me show you this same story in Luke, just a little section of it, and I'll explain it. But it's the same story. And if you read the Bible and the Gospels, the first four books of the New Testament, you'll see that there are a lot of the same stories in those uh, books. Uh, just sometimes they're a little bit of a different account, and you kind of put them all together to get the whole picture. And so that's what we're doing here. Same story found in Luke uh, 24, 49. This is Jesus, the same story, same place, same uh uh, situation. He says, I'm going to send you what my father has promised. He says, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. What am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you that they had already uh, been given the Holy Spirit. They had received the Holy Spirit, but yet you see the future tense there. He's saying, I want you to stay until you have actually been clothed with power by the Spirit. What that means is there's going to be immersion of the Spirit. There's going to be a baptism of the Spirit. Like It's different to just have the Spirit than to be filled with the Spirit and have the power that has fallen on you okay, so you got to notice that future tense there, and so we see the same story that is found in Acts. Same story, same exact moment, and we pick up a, another couple details um, as we put the picture together. This is Acts one three through five. It says after his suffering, he presented himself uh, to them. Remember, you know, hands inside, uh, gave them convincing proof that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, and the same command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised you uh, that you have heard me speak about. And then he says this, for John baptized with water, that's the salvation experience, but in a few days, notice that future tense, in a couple days, you've got the Holy Spirit, you've been saved, but in a few days, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's another immersion that is in our journey with Jesus. And I want you to know it's not weird. And it's not kooky. And it's not mysterious. Like, it's amazing. It's a gift from God. And I don't know about you, but I stand before God and say, if you have a good gift for me, I want it. I trust that you're a good God. I want all that you have for me. And if you have that posture and that attitude, God will give that to you. And so we see that future tense. We see that there's salvation. There's an immersion into Christ's body and into Christ himself. But there are other baptisms that are available to us as well. The one you're probably most familiar with is water baptism. And this is a separate experience from your salvation experience. Uh, I would say that you do not have to be baptized, water baptized, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. And I just need you to know that my, the way that I grew up, that was what was taught to me. That if you were not baptized, that if you got saved in a church and on your way, you know, you placed your faith in Jesus and on your way to the baptistry, you tripped over yourself and fell on something and hit your head and died, you ain't going to heaven. You didn't make it. Like, I'm going to get before heaven and be like, I placed my faith in you, but I tripped. Sorry about your luck, right? Like, I mean, that's not, that's not what's going down here. But that's what I was taught. I mean, I was even taught, like, down to it matters what the person says that is baptizing you as to whether you get into heaven or not. And, and they must say, some people say you must be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And some people say, no, you've got to say I baptize you in the name of Jesus. And if you don't say it right, it doesn't count. And I don't, just for your clarity, if I baptize you, I'm baptizing you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Spirit and in the name of Jesus, okay? So I'm just covering it all today. So you're covered, you're good, but it's not like we're going to get to heaven and I'm going to, you know, be like, yo, Jesus, this is about to happen. And he's like, wait a second. I know you didn't know about this because you was under the water, but while you was under the water, the guy jacked up say the saying, and so you're not getting in today, okay? You know, like we think this, like I was even taught that if you don't go all the way under, like if you get under and your hand was out like everything makes it but your hand isn't that weird like you're gonna get into heaven and be like oh man oh man <laughs> you're gonna be walking around heaven with a nub you know because it didn't make it and it's like come on <laughs> like who comes up with this stuff right I mean these were the crazy things that I was taught about water baptism you know what water baptism is water baptism is simply an outward declaration of an inward transformation, 
Okay? I, when, when I give you a chance to place your faith in Jesus, which we'll do today, it's a private moment between you and Jesus. But at some point, that private moment, uh, I believe God asks us to go public with that. And we go public with that through water baptism. And it's you connecting yourself with Christ in that way, in his death, burial, and resurrection. And so God asks us to do that. In fact, water baptism is mentioned 27 times in the New Testament. It's an important step, but it is not an essential step for you to enter into the kingdom of God, okay? I want you to know that. You need to know that it's a separate experience because the, the salvation experience is a free gift. In other words, you can't do anything to deserve it, to earn it, and if, if water baptism was essential to get into heaven, that means that you did something to deserve it or to earn it. Does that make sense? And God doesn't want to get that mixed up. The salvation experience is unique and it's free and it's on its own, and water baptism is that separate experience uh, that I believe is important and that you need to do it. I believe that. I believe God says to do it. But it is not essential for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Acts 2.41 says this, those who accepted his message were baptized. And in that context, he's talking about water baptism. Why? Again, because your private decision to follow Jesus must become public. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 10, 33 and 34, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. And so going public is really important, but it's not essential. I spoke on water baptism, I don't know, probably six months ago, uh, eight months ago. I don't know if you remember that, but it was actually a message called Put a Ring on It. You remember that message? You know what was crazy is literally about two months after that, I lost my wedding ring. And so, like, I've been in the doghouse for a while uh, because I lost my wedding ring at a softball tournament, and I haven't quite been able to find one. And it, honestly, like, it hasn't been quite a priority. And Lauren's like, you got to get a ring. you got to get a ring on that. And I understand when you look in the mirror and you look at his body, you worried other people might, you know, think something. But... I think I just, like, quenched the spirit with that, okay? Like, <laughs> sorry, Holy Spirit, my bad. Uh, no, but I, I, I need to get a ring on my finger because it's a symbol of the covenant I made. But me not having this ring, it's not like I haven't been married to Lauren because it's just a symbol. It's just the ring. And baptism is the symbol. It's the declaration. It's the ring. You're saying that I'm with Jesus. And I love him, and I am for him. And so it's an outward declaration of an inward transformation. And I believe that that's your second step in your journey. The first step is salvation, be immersed into Christ and his church and his body and the family of God. And the second one is uh, the baptism of water, water baptism to connect you uh, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But there is a third baptism that I've never preached on before, that I haven't had a lot of experience with myself, if I'm being vulnerable and honest, that I'm on this journey with you uh, and together. And that is, number three, write this down, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now remember, the disciples got saved, uh, and when they got saved, uh, they had the Holy Spirit, they got the Holy Spirit, but they necessarily were not clothed with power. They were not immersed or baptized into the Spirit until later in life. Until God said to wait for this to fall on you. And when it hit them, then God sent them out. I could show you a lot of places in Scripture that would prove this point, but for sake of time, I'm only going to be able to show you one. This is Acts 8, and we'll start in verse 5. It says this, Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaim the Messiah there. In other words, Philip goes down and he begins to preach the message and the revival starts to break out. Let's move down to verse 12. And it, so revival breaks out and when they, the people, believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, here it is, they were baptized, both men and women. So they believed, then they were water baptized. Okay, so they believed, that was the first step, salvation. Then they were water baptized, second step. And then we see the third step, 
in Acts uh, 8, starting in verse 14. It says, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted this word of God, in other words, they heard about this revival going on, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, check it out, had not yet come on any of them. Now, they had placed their faith in Jesus, and when you place your faith in Jesus and your water baptized, you get, you get the Holy Spirit, but you haven't been clothed or immersed into the Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's the first one. Uh, then Peter, or Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And this is in connection with immersion into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what this text means. And so they were, later on in life, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And this is another experience. Why another experience? Again, because God didn't want to make sure free gift experience of salvation with these two other experiences. And the reality is the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not so much about eternal purposes as it is earthly purposes to give you power to send you out into this world. You know, it's not all about inviting your friends to church. That's part of it. But there's a sending out that God sends us out and to proclaim Christ boldly and to be carriers of the Spirit and to be full of the Spirit and to be baptized in the Spirit so that there's a unique uh, spiritual supernatural power that is carrying us that when people look at us and they see us speak, they go, wow, there's something different about you. And the purpose of this third baptism is because you've got work to do. You've got a destiny on your life. And listen to me. You can't pull off what God's asking you to do without being full of the Spirit. You can't pull it off. You think that I can pull off what I'm doing up here on my own, in my own strength? I'll just be honest with you. I haven't had a hell of a week this week. It's been rough. It's been tough. But you know what? God's called me. God sent me. God's had me here with you to speak this word over you today. And I couldn't do it without the Spirit of God consuming me and filling me today. So I want you to know this is not a word from Pastor Matt Hudson. This is a word straight from heaven. Not by the power of me, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not the only one that God has called to do something. He's called you. He's destined you. And you need His Spirit just as much as I do. And your gifting and your destiny is not less than my gifting and my destiny. We're all on the same page here. Your calling is just as great as mine. But I can tell you, you're going to need the Holy Spirit. You're going to need to be full of the Holy Spirit to pull off. You're going to need the power inside of you to pull it off. I want to show you something. In 1 John 5, 7, the Scripture says this, For there are three that bear witness in heaven. So just get this in mind. We're talking about heaven, all right? So there are three that bear witness right now in heaven. The Father, the Word, and you need to know that John loved to call Jesus the Word. At the beginning of John's Gospel, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And, and you know that kind of language. And so when he says the Word, he's talking about Jesus. And so literally he says the Father, the Word, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in heaven right now. And these three are one. Now check out the very next verse in 1 John 5, 8. It says, and there are three that bear witness on earth. So there's three that bear witness in heaven. Now check out the three that bear witness on earth. The Spirit... That's immersion into the Spirit. The water, that's water baptism. And the blood, that's immersion into Christ. And these three all agree as one on earth. The baptism of salvation into Christ and His church. Water baptism, the proclamation of your private decision going public. And then the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What am I saying to you this morning, church? Am I saying we're about to get all weird moving forward and it's going to get crazy up in here? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that God has more for you on your journey with Jesus. And it is my honor today to help you begin to move forward in all that God has 
for you. None of us, none of us can sit here and say, I have everything that God has for me. And I've arrived. And I'm at a place where I don't need any more of the Spirit or I need any more of Jesus. No, we all are on a journey. We all have next steps to take. And to be effective on this earth as followers of Jesus, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I think the best way to describe it is maybe to just even share my story with you. And some of you have heard it, but some of you haven't heard all the details. But at 12 years old, um, I was sitting in a church at Pinedale Christian Church in Winston-Salem, and I felt the Spirit of God come over me and convict me of my sin. And I know you think about a 12-year-old, what kind of sin does a 12-year-old have? I don't know, but I was convicted that I didn't want to go to hell. Amen? I was just I wanted to go to heaven. I wanted to be with Jesus. I believed in Jesus. And, and so on that day, uh, they kind of do it really back to back. It's like on a day that you place your faith in Jesus, they walk you kind of up and they put you in a white robe and, and then they take your confession in front of everybody and you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus rose again from the grave. And so I did that while I was in the water. And then immediately they water baptized me. So that kind of happened all together. Sometimes I like to, for somebody to place their faith in Jesus. And then I like, what I like to do is have a conversation about what water baptism is so that you know what you're doing. Um, you know, back then I was 12 years old. It was like, oh, he's saved. Let's dunk him. And like, I didn't find out until I was 22 what the heck I did, right? Like, I mean, I knew I didn't want to, I knew I didn't want to go to hell. I knew I wanted to go to heaven and I knew I wanted to be a Christian, but that was it. That's all I knew. And so when you get baptized, I, I like for there to be a little bit of space there so that I can teach you uh, what that means and what, what you're doing. And uh, it can be meaningful for you. And um, in my experience, man, I did feel uh, a receiving of the Holy Spirit. I had the Spirit at 12 years old, and um, I believe God began to shape me and mold me, and I you know, preached my first uh, message when I was 16 at a Devo, and 22 people responded, uh, placed their faith in Jesus at 16 years old, and was able to baptize all 22 of them throughout the week uh, of camp, and I knew that's when God had put something in me, and so then I, you know, God led me to do some other ministry opportunities, and my brother had his ministry, and I had my ministry, and I went to college, and uh, I was a campus minister there, which meant, you know, I was over college ministry, and about while getting my degree, and God was speaking to me, and then I'll never forget just being in a classroom, and I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me so strongly, and was like, it's time for you to leave the classroom, go back to your hometown, and plant this church. And there had already been some families that had been talking with me about this. And so I was trying to weigh my decisions. I was like, you know, stay in Nashville and, you know, live the dream or go back to Davie County. Right. And so, like, <laughs> I mean, I just want to tell you, I didn't really just jump for joy at the opportunity to move back home, especially after the Bible says about how Jesus struggled ministering in his hometown. And I'm like, how in the world can I minister in my hometown, right? Like those are things I'm thinking, but the Holy Spirit's moving and, and, uh, and, and speaking to me. And so I've always felt like I've had just a, a prompting from the Spirit. I feel like he's spoken to me and impressed upon my heart different things. And, uh, and so I've led our church uh, really for the last nine years in that way. And I look back, if I'm being honest, over the last nine years, and I think a lot of it has been prompting of the Holy Spirit, and I think this is the Spirit. But if I'm being honest, I think I've led our church in the last eight, nine years a lot in my own strength. And yes, in my gifting, and yes, in my talent, but I, I don't feel like I had ever been clothed with power. I don't feel like I've ever been immersed in the Spirit. And so it was just recently that I asked uh, some people who pray for me at this church to lay hands on me and baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And it was a powerful experience. Now, here's what it wasn't. It wasn't like I was falling out and I lost consciousness and I got up and just like, I was, no, that's not what it was like. You know what it felt like? This is the best way I know how to describe it, is I felt like a man stood up inside of me. I just felt like a confidence and a man just stood up and you know what I'm looking forward to? Because I do look back, and I'm on this journey with you. I started this church when I was 26. For those of you who have been around since I was like, how you follow a 26-year-old pastor, I don't know, okay? But I'm appreciative of you, okay? And I've just been on this journey 
uh, just like you have. And many of you have been patient with me. Some of you are older and wiser, and you've been baptized in the Spirit. You've experienced all of it, and you've just been praying for me and just waiting for me, you know, to maybe enter into this stage of life and as a pastor. And I guess more than anything, I'm just super excited to lead the next decade of our church, the next 15, the next 25 years, clothed in power and immersed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I think you're going to see a difference uh, in our church. And it's not going to be weird. It's not going to be crazy. It's just, it's not going to be normal either. Amen? Because normal's not working. Um, And so I just, not trying to be weird with you today, I just came to tell you that Matt Hudson can't pull this off. I am not talented enough. I am not capable enough. And I would be remiss to try to take any credit away from the person who is the Holy Spirit. When people get saved and set free and delivered here, it is because of the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, the book of Acts wouldn't happen if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. I mean, Peter couldn't even tell a girl in a courtyard about Jesus right before he died. He had to deny when he didn't have the Holy Spirit. 50 days later, you know what happened? He preached to thousands of people, and 3,000 people got saved. There was only one thing that happened between those 50 days, between the can't tell the girl in the courtyard, and I deny Jesus to preach to thousands of people, and 3,000 people get saved. There was only one event that happened, and that was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that was the difference between Peter cowarding with a little girl and not being able to admit that he's friends with Jesus and Jesus is the Messiah to him proclaiming boldly and looking to people and saying, no, you hung Jesus on the cross. It was your sin, man. It was just power. And that's what the Holy Spirit does and being full of the Spirit, how it happens. And it's a shame that the church and Christianity has turned the Holy Spirit and packaged the Holy Spirit into something that's showy and that's, you know, all about, you know, the show. And that's sad because that's not it. We don't need to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. We need to run to Him. I want to read Ephesians 4.18 again for you. Do not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. What is Paul saying here? He's saying you're going to try to look for a supernatural high somewhere, right? You're going to try to look for some out-of-body experience somewhere and some, you know, high, whether it's wine or weed, right? Like, whatever gets you high. And he's saying, don't do it the world's way. If you want a supernatural high that is from on high, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Don't get drunk on wine. Don't try to get high with weed. Don't do it the world's way. Be filled with the Spirit of God. God. Everybody's looking for that wow experience. It can be found in the person of the Holy Spirit. And you've destined, you're destined to live a supernatural life, not a natural one. Let me give you four quick things and then I got to end. I'm running out of time here. Four quick ways um, that'll help you be filled with the Spirit. Number one, remove all barriers. Remove all barriers. So for me, I was taught uh, differently about the Holy Spirit. I feel like I was taught a little bit false about the Holy Spirit. So I've had to push through that during this series as well. Okay? No excuses, though. I'm removing those barriers, and I'm wanting all that God has for us. And God has more steps for you in your spiritual journey, but you're only going to get there to the degree to which you're willing to move the barriers that are in the way for you to possess all that God has prepared for you. So for some of you, you need to be water baptized. Something's in the way of that. I don't know what it is, but you need to remove that barrier. For some of you, your marriage needs to be restored and healed, and there's something in the way of that. Some of you need to step up and lead a connect group. Some of you need to step up and serve. Some of you need to step up and forgive that person who you can't seem to forgive, and I promise you, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll be able to be obedient with that. You'll find the strength and the power to forgive the unforgivable. And so there's something in the way. You've got to remove the barrier uh, that is in front of you. All right? Number two, request the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right? So we're going to remove the barriers. And then I want you to pray a prayer like this. God, I know you have incredible things for me on my journey with you. And I want all that your Holy Spirit has to offer. Would you give me more of your spirit? Would you immerse me in your spirit? Would you fill me with your spirit? I know that everything you give is good, 
And so I want all that is good. And say yes to the Lord today. There are a couple things that the Lord just automatically will give you if you ask, and more of the Spirit is one of them. He will give that to you if you will pray and you will ask Him. The Bible says that, Luke eleven thirteen. 13. It says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? And so don't just filter it through what's normal. Normal isn't working. Just say, Lord, I want more of your Spirit. I want more of what you have for me. I want more of the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Number three, receive Him by faith. By faith. Circle that word faith in your notes. Hebrews eleven six says this, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Who earnestly seek Him. And if you'll seek Him, if you'll ask for Him, He'll lead you on this journey with Him and fill you with the Spirit to a place, number four, where you can relate to Him daily. Where you can relate to Him daily. You can be in relationship with Him on a daily basis. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for me and my family and my boys coming up. I want to teach us. I want us to move together as a church in these three baptisms and on this journey with the Holy Spirit. And watch Him do miracles in Moxville that we never thought were possible. I mean, heck, we already got into a place that a lot of people didn't think was possible. But I'm telling you, God's not finished with us yet. God's not done with this. God has more steps, more acts of faith here in Moxville for us. And I'm excited about the future of our church and where we're going and how the power of the Spirit is going to play a big part in that. And I want to invite you to take that step wherever you are on the journey. There are some of you in here today, you need to take your first step and that's the step of salvation. Some of you in here, you need to take your second step and you need to be water baptized. And you can do that any week you want to do it. We have that baptistry filled up. If today you say, hey, I just think I need to take that step and I want to do that before I leave, we'll figure it out. We got your back. But you can do it today. If you want to set up a time where your family can come, that's cool. You can sign up at Next Steps. And Maybe some of you are like where I was a couple weeks ago and you, you feel like, man, I want to be baptized in the Spirit of God. I want to encourage you. Would you stop by the Next Steps Center and just speak to Johnny, who's our Next Steps Director, and just tell her, just say, hey, I, I want more of the Spirit. And would you lay hands on me and would you pray for me? And there are people that will do that for you. And you could not just get the Holy Spirit or receive the Holy Spirit, but you could be clothed in the Spirit of God and walk in His power. I promise you, you do that, you take your next step in your journey, people are going to see you differently tomorrow. There's going to be a glow about you tomorrow. There's going to be a power about you tomorrow. That's going to be like something's different. And then you get to just proclaim Christ boldly and what He's done in your life. I love my church, and I love you. And I believe there's somebody in here today, you need to take your first step and accepting Christ. And we're going to run a little long so we can give somebody an opportunity to do that. And I want you to be led by the Holy Spirit. You know, it's the Holy Spirit that illuminates us to the salvation that is found in Jesus. And so if you feel like, man, today I need to take that first step, it's the Holy Spirit that led you here. And that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you now. And you pray a prayer with me. I'm going to lead you in it. And if it expresses the sincere desire of your heart in that moment, uh, you're saved. You cross from death to life, and you experience the salvation that is the free gift of God, the free grace of God. Let's bow our heads all over this location, and even those that are watching online today. If you know that today you don't quite have a relationship with Christ, I mean, you believed in Christ, you know, you believed about Christ, you know a lot about Christ, but have you ever had the moment where you place your faith in Jesus Christ? It's a place where you are immersed into Jesus and His church. If not, I want you to take this bold step today and place your faith in Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer after me. 
If you believe it in your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that He died on the cross, you'll be saved and you'll experience salvation and you will receive, you'll gain the Holy Spirit in that moment. Here we go. Pray with me if that's you right now. Pray with me silently in your heart. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And right now, God, I want to take my first step. I repent of my sin. I turn from that. And I want your way for my life. And I'm asking you, King Jesus, to forgive me of my sin. I believe you died on the cross for me. And I believe you rose again on the third day. And I want all that you have for me in my life. And so right now, King Jesus, I give you my life. And I place my faith in you. And I'm asking you, King Jesus, would you forgive me? Wash me, white as snow. Forgive my sin, past, present, and future. And I promise to live for you all the days of my life. With every head bowed and with every eye closed, that's a private decision between you and God. So we want to keep it that way in this moment. And so if you prayed that prayer today, you know, man, today was for me. And this was my first step in in my journey. I took it today. I want you to own it. I want you to acknowledge it. You've got the courage of Jesus now to do that. So I'm going to count to three. And when I say three, I just want you to shoot your hand high in the air. Just unashamedly. Here we go. One, two, three. Come on, shoot it high in the air. That's amazing. High in the air. And I just want to pray for you. Would you just leave that a hand up, please? If that's you, would you leave that hand up? I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for these hands that are lifted today. Um, I ask that you would bless them. God, I ask that you would protect them. And God, I pray that you would fill them with your spirit. God, I pray that you would put a new song in their mouth, clothe them in all righteousness, God. And I thank you for the free gift that is salvation. And so, God, we welcome them into the family of God. And I thank you for this life-altering decision today. We love you, Jesus. And it's in Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Are you grateful you came to church today? Was this helpful? Hope this was helpful. Are you ready to move forward?